the baby boomers were raised following a certain format. That format was linear. And it went something like this. Go to school, high school, go, go on holidays before you go to university for about a year or divert for about a year or so. Most people travel overseas or so forth, get a little bit of an understanding of what's going on in the world. Then um, pick a, uh, a subject and um, go to university and try to become something. Usually it was doctors or lawyers or, you know, that's what seemed to be the, the run of the mill uh, push from baby boomers onto my generation. And uh, then eventually find a girl, get married, have children, get a mortgage, get divorced and then die. <laughs> It's interesting because divorce rates, as you'll see in developed nations around the world, are, are, are close to 50%, which is insanity as far as I'm concerned. This whole push towards getting married, um, uh, people wouldn't even take those odds to get into business. I mean, yeah, sure, we take, we take them down at the casino because blackjack's 50% 50, 50 maybe, some, some, depending on the casino, some are 55%, depending on what, how many decks of cards they've got in the shoot. Um, so it's a 50% bet. Wow. You know, would you really take it anyway? And that whole, that whole, that whole paradigm was a linear paradigm. Okay. Everything was sort of like linear and, uh, and you know what the whole conscious shift that's occurring now and, and with the advent of all this technology, the internet, the iPhones and what have you, we're changing. Now, whether we're changing in and of ourselves because we're seeing there's an opportunity to do things differently, and uh, and well, there is because you could you can actually do open open university learning. You can do open learning via the computer and get a diploma from a computer in, in an isolated place. Um, you also have got the the phones where you've got cameras um, and you can literally shoot videos anywhere you like. And all these new, new opportunities are arising. Here we are, you know, doing a podcast. That is a great example. And it seems to be crumbling the linear paradigm. And it's good. It's good. It, uh, it needs to be faded, pushed aside as far as I'm concerned. And this whole... Because... The, the baby boomers were all, were all anchored into a, an age thing. You know, you've got to do this by this age. You've got to do that. Own a house by at least 35 or something like that. Get married before 30. Have children before this certain age. Um, but that's all bullshit. That's all bullshit. And if you, and if you, if you still live in the life um, with, that, with that, um, that mindset, I, I don't know. I feel sorry for you, to be honest. Um, things are changing and uh, it's about time everybody jumped on board and realised that the, 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 the new universe on planet Earth, although it's always been do as you want, whenever you want, um, you, you can do that now. Um, there's, there's, more than an, there's more than enough different occupations that you can engage in and you're not restricted anymore. Okay, you're just not restricted. There's a, there's so many opportunities. It's ridiculous, and I'd like to see people start reflecting and start thinking outside the box. It's like this this whole concept that that all all industries have, where everybody drives from home and goes and works in a building in an office. Why is everybody working in an office? We've got computers, so you're gonna you're 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 positioned in a cubicle all day. And you 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 heard it like sheep to sit in a, in a in an office where you could mo quite easily work from home. And why do I why why am I passionate about this? Because if you work from home, there'd be less cars on the roads, there'd be less accidents, there'd be less pressure on public um, transport, and uh, people would be more, less stressed. So think to yourself, why why is it that the elite 
still push the fact that they want to herd people into a building and st still keep building these mammoth buildings in the CBDs where, where they want to where they want to mass everybody on top of each other, you know, 30, 40 stories high. What for? Control. Okay? It's control. Because they want to have the control of everybody at every, every moment. It's the control. It's control of actually getting you to get in your car, get up a particular time, and actually drive into the city, peak hour traffic, and then come home, peak hour traffic, stressed. You know, they, never, they don't want you to relax. I want people to really think about this and start maybe a movement, a movement where people start asking their bosses or managers, hey, why can't I work from home? We've got Skype, we've got conference calling. You can see if I'm online. There's, there's technology exists so bosses can see if you're working or not and you'll be more productive. And not only that, the beauty is that local, you, you build more of a, because everybody talks about um, breaking off into communities back to how it used to be back in the times of villages. Well, then, then the money will stay in your community because when you go out to lunch, you'll go local. You'll go local and your, your local stores will start booming again. You know, your pet stores, your cafes, your restaurants will have, will have um, trade during lunchtime. But no, here we are, 2015, still focused on the whole horde driving into the city, getting on the public transport and, 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 and everybody catching colds. See, that's the other thing. You're all stacked in the trains. So everybody, if one person's got a cold, everybody's going to get the cold. Whereas if everybody stayed at home just on a, 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 a health, a health, um, health reasoning, it makes so much sense. Less stress, less congestion on the roads. Um, insurances will have to pay out less because there'll be less accidents. There'll be less, less, less um, burden on the public transport. People will be more relaxed. Mums will be able to pick up their, their kids from school while they work at home. Fathers will be able to take their kids um, uh, to local football grounds or soccer ground, whatever you want to call it, or hockey um, games and all that in the area. And then all of a sudden we get a communal feel again. This is something that I've been discussing for quite a while. And now with the podcast, obviously, I've got a chance to air it to the world. And I know people have thought about this, but why aren't we doing more than actually thinking about it? Why those individuals who are in IT who really don't have to be in a cubicle, in an air-conditioned space, you know, which is just so unhealthy, why, why are they doing that? Why, why, why aren't they asking their bosses, hey, listen, their managers, I can do this from home, you know? Um, and the money you'll save, the money you'll save from transport and having to, having to wear clothes, um, different, you know, different clothes. When you work in the CBD, you've got to present well, so you wear different clothes every day. And that's all, that's all, that all costs money. And then you have to go out to, um, to lunch there with the CBD prices, which are through the roof. Whereas if local people lived at home, work from home, it just makes so much of a difference. I really think everybody should um, think about this. And uh, if you're in a situation where you can most likely take your work and keep it at home, you should most likely ask your manager. Think about it, people.